Good morning, everyone. Today we're going to be working through a gouache and watercolor technique that is going to absolutely lift the quality of your work up. And I'm really excited to share that with you. Now, this is all from my gouache course. This is one sort of little excerpt from there. So if you're interested, please go ahead and check out the rest of the course. We have a live run starting January 14. Otherwise, uh, let's go. So we're going to be painting some fish or some fish soup. I'm very excited about this. And we're going to be using a technique called the bead method. This really does come straight from watercolor and we don't find many gouache artists talking about it. But if we're painting transparently, this is a way to get some very nice, very consistent, high quality pieces of, of paint to level up the quality of our work. So before we get started on the painting itself, let's go over the technique just a little bit. So the idea is this, we're going to be grabbing a brush. This is just a, a sort of round brush, uh, throwing in some paint like this nice cobalt blue right here, and then making sure we get enough water. So to make this work, we need three things. We need enough paint, enough water and gravity. So um, at the moment, my table is actually set up a little bit. That means that no matter what I do, the paint is going to be running down, which is very nice. So on this side, we're going to do very transparent and we're going to paint across here. And what we're going to start to notice is this right here. This is why we call it the bead technique. There's a little bead that is running down here. And so long as that bead is down here, as long as we don't let it dry exactly like that, I can keep pulling in more paint and more water and not end up with an edge. And so I can just continue to do this and we're gonna get a very nice, consistent piece of paint up here. This is brilliant. This means we're not gonna get any unintended edges. We're not gonna get um, anything fighting us essentially. We're just gonna get a really nice big flat wash. Now at the end, we normally still do have like a little bit of a bead left over. And so we'll just grab a, a dry brush and essentially soak that up a little bit. And there we go. Now we're not in fact just using watercolor, right? We're, we're using gouache. So this means that even though at the moment we put a lot of water in, it's coming out transparently, we can keep pushing up that paint content to be real classic gouache opaque paint. So let's have a look. Now I'm gonna keep that same amount of water in over here and just add significantly more paint. Remember it does require gravity and does require that we use enough water that we're gonna actually get that bead down the bottom. So sometimes when a piece of paper gets really old, it starts to reject the paint like we're seeing right here. It kind of just skids right off. It can be really frustrating, but it's good to know that that's why it's happening. And even the best brands will do it sometimes. There we go. We start to get some very nice, big, consistent washes. As you can see, because we have gravity, it all just, it all comes down here no matter what. And so we still end up with something very consistent. One really important idea is that when we're dealing with uh, paint that has a lot of water in it, that water needs to go somewhere. It's going to go somewhere, whether we want it to or not. And so having that tilt where that water can come down, that paint can come down, uh, aside from just giving us consistency in that paint, we're giving that paint and water somewhere to go instead of dispersing unevenly or dispersing in strange directions. Uh, and so we're getting to control what's happening and getting an outcome that looks very professional. And we want that. And so traditionally, this kind of in between opaque and transparent is actually really hard to do without leaving a whole bunch of brush strokes behind. All right, so we're finally reaching some very opaque paint. And so we'll paint this this way, which is essentially with the gravity assist, it's, it's pulling down. And then we're gonna paint a little bit this way where everything is flat and we're not focusing on getting a very even distribution of everything. And you're gonna see that the big difference is here we end up with a very flat piece of paint that is very nice. Here we end up with lots of variations in value. 
And this is important because our value is what gives us a sense of 3D quality. And so if we start having random bits of light and dark, there's an appropriate time and place for that. But we do start saying things about the form of what we're describing. Uh, and if we're not intending for that to happen, then this ends up working against us instead of working for us. So we're gonna try and start keeping this pretty simple uh, in the great grand scheme of things. But we really wanna to start to use this idea of using this bead method, right? This is what we're here for, just to learn this particular idea. Uh, when would you use this as opposed to, say we've done a lot of wet in wet work, a lot of just wetting the page first and then allowing everything else to dry slowly. It allows us time to get into soft transitions and then working our way to harder edges. Well, we can still use those ideas, but not be working for the whole page. We can run a primary color along here and then start to work into it to get some soft transitions here. But let's say we never really want to bleed past this edge or the top edge of the fish. If there are times and places where it would just be best to come in and put something down and get a really nice hot edge and then work softly within that. So we're gonna do that here with the fish first. And I'm gonna mix up a number of different things here. When it comes to working wet and in wet in gouache, it's really helpful actually a lot of the time to mix up a couple of your mixes first. If we're not wetting the page and, and making this last for a long time, then it might actually benefit us to have a couple of these mixes we can just pick from and, and have them already ready. There's a really nice variety of colors that we're getting in here. And so remembering that that gouache kind of reduces into the middle in terms of uh, how light and how dark it is. We sometimes want to push, push how light and how dark it is coming out. That way when it resolves into its middle values, those middle values are really actually very much where they need to be. And so we're, we're going to try and keep some of this activated. We we're talking about using this bead method. So we're applying enough water that there's always something sort of sitting down the bottom. There's always this little bead down the bottom. This also means that when we're using multiple colors, all these colors are going to merge together a little bit, which could be really nice. But the main sort of effect, the main thing we're looking for right here is that we can do all of this work and not have necessarily at the moment, though there's nothing wrong with it, not have individual brush strokes coming in. I'm going to intentionally try and leave some little white spots in here. And since this is gouache, we can always remember and remind ourselves that this is kind of a, this is a first pass. And so anything that we don't like in here, even though ideally we, we want to get things where we want them and where we need them, like right at the beginning. But even if we don't, it's okay. And so what you'll find when you're doing this is everything that we've learned so far about working wet and wet in the gouache course has direct implications for what we're doing right now. And so, you know, what I've been teaching isn't really like a, a technique. It's really just the way that gouache works. And we can lean into that because that either it works on this, this grand scale where we're, we're painting with everything wet, or it just works in the way that two brush strokes interact with each other. And I think that's, I think that's brilliant. So what we're gonna do here, I'm gonna wait for this to dry because I want that, that nice hot edge over here where, where this kind of second fish is laying. And so while we're doing that, we can move across to different parts of the painting that aren't necessarily going to touch uh, and, and work our way in. So I'm, I think I'm gonna do the bowl around here. So we have our tilt 
and we have just enough water that we're, we're really forming this little lip down the bottom. And so that really means that even though I'm doing lots of brush strokes, everything is essentially coming as one big uniform color. And I'll probably come over later on with some, with some of this in my more blue purpley kind of feeling that's over here. It's very nice, uh, but it's definitely for now a very opaque thing that I want to add in later. A little scratch of right at the top. All right, so let's, let's lean into this, right? We're here to talk about this bead method, so we're just going to do it. And that means that I'm, I'm going to keep this, this lip that I know we're, we're going to be turning down into, into this sort of darker shadowed area, this beautiful red bowl. So we're going to try and keep this bead pretty solid. And, and have enough of it there that it's going to stay wet while I'm mixing up something darker. And quite often, one of the things that gets in the way of this working is just not having enough paint. And so I'm gonna put this in, and we're gonna get this really big bleed of this, of this color coming down. But in a way that's gonna give us a kind of a nice rounding to the bowl. We're gonna see if that's everything we need it to be. Brilliant. Now I'm gonna come in and do the, the black around here. And there are some little highlights in here that we could either do transparently or opaquely, which if we're doing them transparently, I'd kind of put that in now. And so I think let's, let's just do that, which means I want to start off with some of these highlights that are a bit more uh, yellow. And this is going to be, this is going to look a little strange at first, right? Cause we're painting something that we know we're going to paint on top of. And then we get this beautiful, almost teal color over here. So at the moment, until this dries, I'm a little hesitant to, to put them side by side. But you know what, for the sake of causing some chaos, let's do it. I think it's gonna be fine. Okay, and then I'm gonna mix up the rest of this black. All right, while this is still a little bit wet, I want to get sort of some of the feeling of it. Okay, so we're gonna start to pull in just kind of all the little missing pieces here. And then we can really start to play with how light and how dark things are and try to get that balance so that we get to start to get that really nice feeling to it all. So you can see something like this where I put that first one down and I didn't put extra paint next to it. I just put some water there and that still enabled it to, ha to have this very nice soft transition away from the color. And now we're gonna do exactly the same thing again. Put a nice little bit of water just at that edge. I'm just gonna soften that edge up. All right, so we have essentially a nice little bit of everything in here. Very nice. And what we want to do now is start to get things as dark as they should be and as light as they should be and work our way into this. When we're working transparently, quite often we'll work light and then get darker as we go. You can see some of our more opaque passages are, are already darker. But when we're dealing with anything that involves water and dries less shiny, essentially. Everything that we do is gonna get a little bit lighter, a little bit darker, and move to the middle tones. So we wanna come in here and start to put in some of the really nice darker tones. And especially once we get this fish in here really feeling very nice, it's, it, this is gonna be great. And so at this stage, I'm gonna be using less water and more paint, and that's gonna give us something significantly thicker to deal with. And so as I'm doing this, I'm not focusing on 
every single little scale that I see, but rather I want to do something that very much represents those scales. And so the question is, how can I use my brush to do that? Right now, one of the ways I can do that is to kind of have this brush stroke pattern that I'm, that I'm working with. And in doing that, I don't have to enslave myself to the reference. I just get to do something that feels a little bit natural and ends up with the feeling that I want. And that feeling, that texture, that beautiful texture. I love it. So right now there's a lot of texture in this face, a lot of texture in here. And so to try and keep the overall value of, of everything, which is kind of how light and how dark it is, in general, I'm gonna come in pretty transparently. That means I'm using a lot of water and I can pretty well see the things that I've already done underneath. And that's essentially helping me to, to make little adjustments, just little adjustments where I need, rather than feel like I'm creating whole new things or, or whole new ideas. Feels like I am amending a statement rather than creating a whole new statement. So this time around, I'm gonna come in and we're essentially gonna make a gradient in here that comes from here exactly where it is and it's gonna get darker and more yellow as it comes down here. The way we're gonna do this is we're actually gonna, this time, start with water. And then we're gonna paint into the, the bottom edge of that water. And that's gonna give us a really nice, soft, loose transition into this color without having to deal with any really hard edges. By the way, there's really nothing wrong with hard edges. Really nothing wrong. Uh, but we wanna lean into everything that our, that our paint can do and really learn and understand 